So as I was sitting down and figuring out all the things that I wanted to go over with parents and kind of looking at that big list, I came upon the idea of 10 rules, 10 rules for parenting. And where this kind of stemmed from was for our instructors, we have 40 points that they, that they go through from a teaching standpoint. So they have um, four different sections, 10 points in each section that they have to know inside and out as part of being an instructor. Uh, it's, it's pretty technical and fairly critical. Uh, I don't want to go that deep with you. But I figured eh, we'll go with 10. 10 a good number. And so, as I said last time, what I want to do is it's going to be, you know, what's kind of the real issue, um, what's a few simple strategies to help kind of overcome that issue, and what's the deeper challenge that you need to be thinking about or the deeper, um, I don't want to say problem, but what it is that's driving the problem and, and what we can do to overcome that. And so, like I said, having a better perspective. Um, and so rule number one that I, as I, again, I came up with the ten, list of 10 pretty fast. Rule number one is this. It's a dictatorship, not a democracy. Now, I know for some of you parents, like, yes, I've been waiting to hear that a long time. Some of you are like, oh, all right. We've had a lot of um, people in the last couple of decades saying that your kids should have free reign and be allowed to do whatever and, and things of that nature. And there's a challenge with that. And the challenge is kids thrive on structure. Um, you know, so the, 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 the line in the sand is what I want you to think about. Consistency. Very clearly defined line. Because um, the real issue with, you know, one of the big things I heard from parents was, I can't get them to do things the first time I ask. Or um, they're not taking care of the responsibilities or things along those lines. And it's a matter of inconsistency. Not on their part, but on yours. You know, so you got to think about how am I consistent. We are busy. Being consistent can be very challenging. But again, we got to think from a simplicity standpoint. You know, give your kids rules. Yeah, I know you have probably a lot of unwritten rules for your kids, but actually write them down. You know, what are those written rules that they have to follow that also have consequences? And again, in another video, I'm going to go into a little more detail on that. But as a whole, have them help choose on the consequence. Uh, second part is eye contact. You know, when you're talking to someone, if they're not looking at you, they're not engaged. They might be partially engaged, but they're not engaged. You know, make sure your kids are eyes on you. If they're playing a video game, if they're head down like looking at a video game or watching TV or anything's going on, they are not focused on you, plain and simple. Stand in front of the TV or tell them to turn their pad off or put down the electronics or whatever the case may be and have them look at you. But the corollary is also very important. When your kids are talking to you, make sure you have the eye contact with them. Because if you don't, now you know why they don't care if they have it with you. All right, so we got to think about it that. Other part is be very detailed in what you want them to do. You got to understand the seven-year-old child has only been speaking your language for four years, five years. You know, there's a reason why their jokes aren't funny. They haven't mastered the language yet. So you can't imply things, you have to be very specific. So be specific with, with your kids. Uh, and the last one is, again, when they are kind of butting into you a little bit, so we call illusion of choice. And basically what it boils down to, and this goes back to uh, the rules as well and, and figuring out what the consequences are for not following the rules, illusion of choice is when you come to them and they don't want to do something, you give them an option of A or B to do, but both of them are things you want to do. Say, so you say, well, you want to brush your teeth first or make your bed? It's not go brush your teeth and then make your bed because they're going to fight you on it. Well, you want to brush your teeth first or make your bed? They put up a fuss. Well, you can either do one of those two things or you can choose to lose something else. All right, so you kind of decide. Uh, so again, those are simple strategies. You know, create rules that they can see. Um, eye contact, huge part of it, eye contact. You know, remember, talk down to them. They have a very limited vocabulary for a very long time, all right? And then give them that, that choice, but it's an illusion of choice. It's the choices that you want them to make. Uh, the, the deeper psychology we need to understand like this is, like I said, we thrive on structure. You know, there's been some science and research that's been done with this that I don't agree with 
but it gets to the point that it's been done both with monkeys and mice. And basically, the, the, the experiment went in a way that mice were given food. Monkey was given food. They get the food at certain drops. And then the mice would be given the food, but as they're going, before they get the food, they get a shock. And then the food would drop, and then they'd get the food. So then it got to be where at first they're freaking about, about getting the shock. But then as time went on, they realized they're going to get the shock and then get the food. Well, then it went to where sometimes they get a shock and sometimes they want. And when they went to where it became a very haphazard electrical uh, shock, the mice started losing control. Same thing with the monkeys. The monkeys actually started to become very violent um, and almost losing their mind. So when you are giving your kids an inconsistent response, one day you're telling them no, the next day you're telling them maybe, the next day you're tired and it's like, ah, sure, whatever. Then the next day after that you're telling them no again. They're like, ah, what's going on? You know, so you've got to keep that in mind that you're giving them a shock. Sometimes you give them a little shock. Sometimes you're giving them no shock. Sometimes you're giving them a hard shock. And they don't know how to react. Make sure it's a consistent shock. You know? I grew up on the farm. Uh, and... We had a lot of cattle. Cattle are surrounded by a fence, little itty bitty fence. Right? That little itty bitty fence had electrical current going through it. Now, back in the old days, electric fencers that charged the fence were kind of powerful. You know, you get a fencer that would run 10 miles and give you a pretty good snap. As technology changed, the fencers also got better. So, again, a fencer that would have like a run a five-mile fence, and if you had five miles fence on it, they give it a shock, but cattle push into it. Occasionally, they push through it. So then some guys would have a five miles of fencing, but put the 10-mile fence on it. Oh, you get a little harder shock. Sometimes they push, sometimes they not. Um, my dad has a lot of fence. Um, not sure how many miles. It's a few miles, not many. Runs a 100-mile fencer on it. I will tell you from experience, that one will about put you to your knees when you touch it. All right? You very clearly know where the line in the sand is. Cattle don't press that fence at all. So again, you got to give them a little shock. Is the shock enough? If not, amp it up a little bit. I don't recommend putting the 100-mile fencer on them. Um, that, that'll create its own issues. But make sure they're getting that ample shock that they realize, ooh, I'm stepping out of bounds. I need to step back in. All right? So again, just they thrive on structure. And that's what we got to understand. And... You know, why do, why do we have such an easy time getting kids to perform? We have a very structured environment in our academy. You know, and our instructors are trained. Like I said, we have 40 points. Here's what you got to do. You know? So for you as a parent, it, kind of the final note of this is one of our four focus words. We have four focus words. Integrity, courage, compassion, and action. Right? I want you to have some courage. Right? And our definition of courage is I have challenges and fears, but I take action anyway. Now, hopefully you don't have many fears with your child, but I'm guessing you have some challenges. And the challenge is, it gets to the end of the day, the last third of the day, you're exhausted. You're mentally spent. You're physically probably not doing great. And they're grinding you down, grinding you down, grinding you down. And you have to have the courage to stand your ground. So I encourage you to make sure you keep that line in the sand, no matter how you feel. Because if it gets wavy, they win. It's plain and simple. So, hope that helps. Next week, I have probably rule number two. There might be a 1A, but I'm guessing we're going to go with rule number two. So, until then, start working on these strategies.